that I really dodged dodged a bullet with that, and I I, I know I did. That that was something mm. that I I never I I fought off as as long as I thought I could. It's amazing what the ten weeks have done. I can't even imagine what ten months will be like. How did you find Carnival? Well, um, I've had this uh, issue with weight my entire life. Um, we call it the thickness, and uh, it and it really like growing up. Um, I'd say like the first six years of my life, we kind of moved around a lot. Um, and uh, in first grade is kind of where I started developing the traits of the thickness. And um, so my, my parents would like, they would uh, enroll me in programs like soccer and basketball um, and even like uh, uh, some baseball. And uh, that really helped through like the, the, the three warm seasons of the year. Then winter came along and I'd start develop, developing that back again. Um, and that pretty much was like through elementary school. Um, and then in junior high, we moved to Chicago. And uh, uh, there was a lot of things in the community that I enjoyed doing. So it kept me active. Um, through the, like Down the street was a swimming pool. I could ride my bike all over the neighborhood. Um, we had, uh, I was involved in basketball, track, and even uh, uh, cross country. Um, if you can imagine, I, I ran the uh, 110 hurdles at one point. <laughs> so, um, so that kind of kept me uh, in shape too. Um, but then again, the winter would come and I'd kind of uh, uh, thicken up again. Um, and then it was in high school. Um, I decided that I didn't want to play soccer anymore. I wanted to trade it in for football. And, uh, but at that time I was, I was like six feet tall. I was always taller than everybody else in my class. Um, I was like six feet tall, weighed like 185 pounds. So there wasn't really a lot that I could do as a lineman at 185 pounds. Um, and so I really didn't kind of care for football that much. I didn't pay it that much attention. Um, but then something happened in the fourth quarter of my freshman year that uh, I really got interested in excelling in the sport. So every day after class, um, I would go up to the uh, school gym gymnasium and uh, lift weights every single day. And then uh, during the summer, we had a bench press in our basement and uh, I'd work out every day, ride, a, ride my bike. So when I got back to uh, school sophomore year, I was like six foot two, six foot three and had uh, slimmed down, but I put on this muscle. So I was like, I was about th uh, 210 pounds. Um, and they didn't recognize me at all when I walked out uh, the first time. And uh, that kind of gave me that feeling like I enjoy being big. I didn't want to be thick, but I wanted to be big. Um, and that just, that continued through high school. My senior year, I ended, I was, uh, during the football season, I was six foot five, weighed like 250 pounds. And uh, I was just solid. Um, and then uh, luckily, at the end of uh, my senior year, I met my wife. And uh, we graduated in 91. We got married in 92. Um, and then I started uh, not working out and uh, exercising as much because I had two full-time jobs, trying to get make sure that uh, you know, my daughter came along pretty quick. And then four years later, my son. and. Uh, just trying to keep uh, food on the table, keep a roof, a roof over our head. So there wasn't really time for that. Um, and we, we, were, we, were, we were pretty poor. Uh, we didn't have a lot of food in the house. So that kind of helped keep that, uh, that thickness down for, for a while. Um, but once I hit about 25 years old, the scale started going up. And uh, to the point where uh, right around 30 years old, I'd gone from 250 pounds to 320 pounds. And uh, I felt pretty good at, at 320 pounds. I mean, I felt strong and I felt like I could do anything still. Um, and there wasn't anything I could do to gain weight or lose weight. Uh, when, I, when I tried to lose a little bit of weight, it would just come right back to 320 pounds again. Um, and that was pretty true until I was uh, mid mid 30s. About 35, I started putting more weight on and started uh, the scale, scale started going up um, to the point where when I hit about 40, I went from 325 to 425 pounds. And um, through all this time, I'm, I'm trying my best 
um, I'm trying all the different programs that there there were. I don't remember. I don't know if you know Susan Powder at all. She had uh, she was on infomercials all over the place in the U.S. and her big line was "Fat makes you fat." So I said, "I'm not going to eat any fat." So I went down to like 10 grams of fat a day. I was eating tuna, beans, and potatoes. It was basically what I, uh, and it worked for a bit, but man, was I boring. Um, I tried uh, I tried the Atkins for a little bit. Uh, I went on the all liquid diet where they prescribe you shakes to drink. And uh, and those shakes, oh man, they tasted horrible. Um, I, did, uh, I did the all potato diet. Uh, that didn't last long. Um, I did the paleo diet. Um, and that worked well. My doctor said, Hey, um, you might want to try this. So I did. Um, and it gave me kidney stones. And so I, I went back to him. I said, Hey, I tried, I did the diet and it gave me kidney stones. So he looked at me and goes, yeah, that could happen. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, but from the time I was 45 to like 50, um, the scale started going up again and I couldn't stop it. So I went from 450 pounds. Um, to about 525 pounds within that time. Um, I mean, I had I had developed gout. Um, I had developed uh, high blood pressure. Um, I got winded really quick when I was walking. My joint pains in my knees were so bad, and in my lower back, um, it just just struggling to get from. Uh, from a chair to a standing position was just kind of unbearable. Um, and it got to the point where um, one day, not too long ago, um, I take my wife, we went to the, to the store um, and uh, I saw, I, I dropped her off and I was waiting in the car for her. And uh, I saw this guy walking into the store and I became insanely jealous that that guy could walk into the store and I couldn't. And so it was at that point that I said, you know what, I've had enough and um, I'm going to do something that I always said I would never, ever do. And I called to make an appointment for gastric bypass. And um, that was like in the beginning of July of this year. Um, and I, I, so I've heard of um, the carnivore diet, the carnivore lifestyle. Through like Joe Rogan, uh, Jordan Peterson, but I mean, those guys—they were not like me. You know, their their starting weight would have been considered my ideal weight. So they, and they they never had prop like they they never had issues the issues that I had as far as you know um, being able to stand up from a seated position because of your weight. Um, Figuring out when you could go to the store based on if there might be a availability of one of those little mobility carts because there's no way I could walk around a, a store here. Um, so I just had enough and I, I signed up for a, an appointment. Um, and it was in, on July 27th um, when I was doing some work and I was listening to some uh, videos on YouTube kind of in the background. And uh, one of the suggested videos that came up was um, some guy homestead how, and I had never heard of it. I I never searched it out, but for some reason um, that came up on my feed. And uh, he was interviewing a guy uh, by the name of uh, intentional carnivore Sean White. And uh, the thumbnail we talked about him losing four, uh, 243 pounds in one year. I said. I got to listen to that. And so I was listening to it and uh, it was amazing because the words that were coming out of his mouth were my words. Like I had been through all everything that he was talking about. Um, and so I was just, I was just flabbergasted um, until it got to a point where he said, um, he said, if you have ever tried everything else, why not carnivore? And then he said, I have to get this message to that one person that has lost hope and is ready to give up. There is still hope. Do not give up. Give this a try and see what it does for you and then come back and let's talk. 
And for the first time in a very long time, I was actually filled with hope. Like maybe there is something else that I could do. And so um, I immediately called my wife and I said, uh, hey, I got this new thing that we have to do. And uh, she said, okay. And so that day we went to the store. I had a whole list of everything we needed, the beef, the steak, the eggs, the 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 bone broth, the butter. I mean, we were ready. Um, but then there was a so we went to the store, we got the whole whole thing. We got we got a water dispenser with the five gallon jugs, all of it. Um, and uh, we got home and uh, found a place for everything to go, but we had all of this food that we couldn't eat. So what we did was we uh, there's a community uh, Facebook page, and I posted on there that um, we're doing a different uh, diet. We have to get rid of this food. We put all of our food on these two huge tables in her craft room, took a picture and said, anybody want food, Come, let us know, come and get it. Within five hours, everything was gone. Well, everything except the dry beans. <laughs> but, uh, but it was amazing. I mean, it, so it was a great place for us to start because, um, it made us feel like we were able to, you know, while making the change to help ourselves, we were able to also help the community. And I did not know that there were so many people in the in our community that needed that help. Um, and it was everything from, you know, somebody didn't uh, uh, judge their check and it, and it could they couldn't make it last to the end of the week to um, somebody had like had emergency um they took in like five kids for uh, uh, foster care on an emergency basis and could use the help. Um, so it help, helped us kind of feel uh, really kind of connected with the community while we started the process. So that's kind of how we started and how we got to starting the program. And and that's July this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. So your wife's doing this with you? She is. Yep. Now she's awesome. doing it for, for completely different reasons because um, she has like autoimmune disorders. So um, it it was good that um, Jordan, I, I showed her a podcast where Jordan Peterson's daughter was going through her whole process with her autoimmune. And um, that really kind of, help solidify that yeah we're we're going to do this um and see where it takes us so um in in the time that you've been on it what's that so it was the end of july so august september october so about three months around two and a half yeah, months we're, we're, like i'm just finishing week 10 right now so how are you feeling after 10 weeks oh my gosh well dave i could tell you right immediately that first week um I noticed a difference because I could walk from my desk at work to the reception area, which is just a short hallway. And I wasn't out of breath. Like that was the first thing that, that made me go, this is crazy. My knees were not hurting as bad. My back, my lower back wasn't hurting as bad. Um, I could actually walk up there, stand there for a couple minutes before walking back. Um, and, and that first week, um, I lost 17 pounds and I went, holy cow. I mean, I remember weight watch when we did, I did weight watchers. They said, if you lose one to two pounds in a week, you're doing good. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is going to take me years. <laughs> I, I can't do that. But like, even, even ex like exercise. We decided to go to the pool. We have a small community pool that's inside. Um, and I was just so hopeful that things could change. Like I didn't mind taking off my shirt and swimming in my swimsuit, uh, you know, for an hour or two. I didn't care who saw me. I didn't care what anybody thought. Um, I didn't care if it took me a half hour just to swim one lap. Um, so, which is, uh, you know, what I what, what I call swimming is more like a floating forward aggressively, 
<laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, and I, I learned things too, like uh, right off the bat, like I needed to learn how to uh, prepare food in advance so I didn't get stuck in a situation. Um, so there's there's one day I think we uh, that happened and I was just so hungry and I didn't have anything available. So we ended up going to, to McDonald's and getting a couple uh, uh, double cheeseburger plain and taking the buns off of them. And I said, well, I'm not doing this again. This is ridiculous. So we went out and got a dehydrator and some London broil and learned how to do beef jerky. And um, it, since then, I'm never without a, a big pack of beef jerky just in case. Um, how are you going with with things like cravings? Do you are you past that, or do you still sometimes feel the urge to have like uh, something that you would have eaten before, maybe some kind of snack food? Yeah, well, um, it, it's kind of funny. The uh, right at the very beginning is when I found uh, your guys's uh, uh, live broadcast, um, and uh, the first time I, I clicked into it, th there's the ad that shows up before it goes live, and it was for pizza. I went, oh my god! <laughs> so, and, and and as background, typically what we do uh, here at the house is. Um, we we schedule our date night as uh, as Friday night, and uh, we have dinner and watch your guys' broadcast. And then my wife goes to her, to her craft area of the house, and we listen to the show together. And then when it's done, then I go join her and we talk about the program. Um, and uh, but that that pizza uh, that pizza is what gets me all the time. Um, I, I it's more to the point where like I re right now I. I remember liking pizza, um, but it's it's like I remember liking getting on on a uh, uh, a big wheel as a kid and liking it, but I'm not going to go back and do it. <laughs> so um, it's just one of those things that they're off limit things, and uh, the way we started, I think, kind of solidified that for us. Hmm. That's a really interesting, um, interesting mindset. I think, yeah, it kind of describes mine as well. The kind of I remember that I used to like it, but you it just it's just not a thing anymore. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And it always helps yeah. when you you have a, a belly full of meat. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. Um. From say now until the end of the year, what kind of that that gives you another? What would that be? Another just over ten, another just over ten weeks. What do you hope mm -hmm. to achieve by the end of the year? Well, now I'm at the point where I don't uh, I don't get on the scale on a daily basis. Um, I, I don't even do it on a weekly basis. I, I try and stick around like one month, um, just because, like in the beginning. It was so important to see those pounds come off and that's kind of the hook right so you see the progress you want to continue um but it got to that point where um where i no longer was seeing the progress as quickly as i did before um so i got a little discouraged so that's when i stopped doing it daily and i started doing it weekly um and then the same thing happened after doing it weekly for a little bit it became discouraging so I stopped because you have those times, right, where um, you're doing well and the weight's coming off and then your body starts healing and the weight stops coming off so quickly. Um, so, um, yeah, within that first three weeks, I'd lost 33 pounds. Um, and then at this point, uh, I wasn't supposed to weigh myself until tomorrow. But for you, Dave, I did. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> so I could tell you that uh, as of 10 weeks, um, I'm down a total of 55 pounds. So I am, I am. So, hoping, sorry. Yeah. To uh, I just wanted to clarify. You mentioned 17 pounds before. What was the 17 pounds? That was but 17 pounds. What was time my very period? first week. The first week. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow, That's all right. so 55 pounds all up. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, 
now i i talked before about just walking to the reception area um just two weeks ago when there was the, i went to the meet and greet and met everybody i was standing around and talking for an hour or so and i was absolutely fine i mean it, it's just night and day in such a short period of time um even just losing 10 percent of my body weight so you must be feeling a lot more comfortable just in your clothes i am i am and um uh, there there are shirts that uh were ex like skin tight on me that i would have to wear for work and i feel very uncomfortable like going out to customers um and now they're just kind of you know i can you know they're they're a lot looser um it was about week i want to say week four or five that uh interesting thing happened one of my coworkers had noticed that my clothes were fitting better and and that i was um i was walking more upright um and not so hunched over and kind of doing the the say the thick man walk where i'm kind of waddling back and forth as i'm going down the hallway she noticed that it was different and uh you know i had dreamt of the day that somebody else outside of my wife would notice and when it happened you know it didn't have the same power as i thought it did it was i didn't really need that validation i i, I learned that self-validation is way more powerful than any type of external validation uh that there is um but in terms of what i'm hoping to accomplish by the end of the year um after all that um i just my main focus is to continue doing um what has been working making uh, adjustments along the way and just kind of uh seeing what happens i mean that that's awesome the the those results are great in just 10 weeks i mean yeah. <laughs> when you think like if it was weight watchers that would be that would be over a year of results assuming yeah. it worked right exactly and i yeah. i would be miserable <laughs> hmm. yeah so you'd be miserable eating your beans and potatoes and your your little like link cuisine style meal yeah um, sir so like outside of outside of the weight loss part um what is the biggest how would i say um like life improvement for you well so before we went down to the uh for the meet and greet so that was in South Carolina, and we're uh, up by Cleveland, Ohio. Um, before we went down there, um, I actually set up a bunch of uh, dates to have with my wife that I never would have been able to do just a couple months before. We went to a hot air balloon festival, um, which includes a lot of walking and standing and looking around. Um, we went through, we went to like a, a miniature golf, which I was able like, I could walk through the whole course and we could play. Um, we went through zoo, like zoo, a couple zoos along the way. Um, just mobility and being able to um, do things with my wife that she liked to do that we couldn't do because I couldn't. Um, there's that, and I think there's also um, the realization that there there are good people out there. Um, the, the community um, through Facebook and um, what I'm realizing now with with my uh, YouTube channel, the, the feedback that I'm getting has been incredible. Um, and so, you know, everybody has those down days where, you know, not feeling the best and and kind of second guessing. And I can always turn back to, to uh, things that have been said before. It's so it's so it's so up uplifting. So ho hope in people and wanting to give back. Can you can you help me understand like um, the kind of distances? So you said you're in Ohio and you, uh, I'm kind of saying that with a Japanese accent because that's good morning in in Japanese. So <laughs> Ohio to um, 
to South Carolina. How far is that? Did you drive? How long does that take? We drove. It was about a 10-hour trip one way. 10 hours? Yeah, yeah. So is that something that you would have found more difficult 10 weeks ago because of because of your the 55 pounds extra? Oh, absolutely. Um, just sitting in my car. I have a, I have a fairly large car, um, but it just would not have been comfortable for that period of time. Um, and, and the thought of, um, having to stop along the way and, uh, uh, and do things, uh, would have terrified me. <laughs> so, um, I, I kind of, I was pretty much a, a absolute homebody, um, didn't like to go out. And so making that trip was enormous. And then also meeting of, you know, 50, 60 people that I never met before. Um, would have been intimidating too, um, because it just didn't didn't trust people that much. But um, coming to find out what this community is like, um, yeah, that was a game changer too. How is your family feeling about this? I mean, obviously your wife's doing this with you, so and she's very supportive. Like, how how are your kids feeling about it? Oh yeah, my my kids are amazed when they come over. Um, like my son, he, he asks questions, uh, all the time about it. Um, and, uh, but they're, they're seeing the results of it. Um, and, and like even small things like, um, uh, okay, my, my, I play fetch with my cat <laughs> and I, he, he'll bring the, the, this, we have this little tiny ball that I'll throw and he'll go and grab it and come back and drop it at my feet. Well, two months ago, I used to have this little contraption where it was like a, a extra extra arm that I could reach down and grab it, and it would just pinch, and I pick it up. And um, you know, it's it's small things like that that I don't need that anymore. Um, they notice they notice that there's no longer a chair in in the in the kitchen area where we do the cooking and cleaning because I used to have to you know I take. 15 steps into the kitchen and I have to sit in front of the sink to do dishes or uh, while Teresa was cooking, or I would have to sit while I was helping at the stove while she was doing other things. Um, it's things like that. What What's your day-to-day -day eating like? You're well, doing two meals a day, one meal a day? Well, at the beginning, I was uh, uh, the B, 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 and E, uh, just very strict. And uh, it was three meals a day. Um, the uh, and then it kind of developed. A, oh, let's go ahead and introduce um, cheese or maybe a processed meat, but it's meat, um, and that just did did not do well for either one of us. Um, mm. So back back off back that uh, off of that and went back to the B B and E three times a day, um, and then it eventually turned into two times a day. Um, Teresa, Teresa still does uh, twice a day. She'll have lunch and then dinner at home. Um, and I found recently that um, one meal a day is all that I need. And uh, mm -hmm. I do fine throughout work. Um, today was a little different. I had uh, I had some eggs uh, that I brought in from, uh, from home, but um, typically I get home and uh, we cook up a couple of ribeyes. I might have a one and a half or two and she'll have like one and, and, uh, but yeah, one a day is pretty much where I'm at right now. Mm. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm playing with the idea like now of maybe introducing instead of a full meal at lunch, maybe just like a snack. Um, just because I might not be getting everything that I need. And I don't know if that is kind of, uh, uh slowing down my progress. You mentioned work. What what kind of work do you do? Um, I work in an addiction facility, um, so we do uh, we do a lot of uh, urine drug screens. And um, my I actually work with Teresa. She she runs the lab there, and uh, I work with a program that helps businesses around the area to uh, for uh, pre employment, random selection, drug screening, alcohol screening. Uh, Department of Transportation stuff with truck drivers. 
uh, to kind of keep them legal. Mm. So, so for for your day to day, are you predominantly at a desk, or um, are you always on your feet, or how how does it work? Sure. Well, for me, uh, I'm mostly uh, uh, at my desk, or I'm in my car going to uh, to meet with clients or potential clients. Um, there really is not a lot of physical activity involved with uh, my job at all. Where Teresa, mm. she's on her feet all the time uh, in the lab. Mm. So uh, one one of the reasons I ask is because having a desk job is pretty much what I what I've always had as well. So um, I'm I, I'm always just sitting like I am now, and. Um, Prior to starting Carnival, um, after I'd been seated for an hour or more, standing up was a bit of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, you know, that kind of feeling. And yeah. that was that quite quickly changed. Have mm -hmm. you noticed any change for yourself as you're standing up? Yeah. Um, probably for the first four weeks, um, I would stand up and have to stop and wait for my blood pressure to kind of equalize, and then I could go and do whatever I needed to do. Um, but yeah, it was the creak, uh, it's a creaking of the joints, the knees standing up and and um, just that that pain. Um, where be and before, if I, needed a, if I needed something from the reception area or uh, one of my coworkers, I'd just type out an email. And now there's, I, I just get up and go. Uh, and there's there's almost a victory in that where uh, yeah. where that I couldn't I wouldn't do that before. And now I, it's almost like mm -hmm. I look for opportunities to to show myself this is an improvement. That's that's great. That really is good. Do, so, you know, that no longer sending the email, getting up and just going for it, is that a feeling of almost almost wanting to move as well? I mean, I know that you get the victory of doing it, but do you actually just want to be more active? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, I've been doing too is like on my lunch break, um, I'll walk around the block a couple of times. Um, wow. Which which is which is great in of itself um but where we work is surrounded by fast food and so it's almost like a uh i'm, I'm forcing myself to be tempted and refuse to give into it if that makes sense hmm. uh, interesting but do you find that um that the 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 temptation as you're walking past all those um places is dissipating absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. um maybe the first couple times i might have kind of uh you know flirted with it a little bit it stood there a couple minutes and i give a good sniff and uh <laughs> maybe get a little too close to that front door but uh it didn't i mean it didn't it didn't last very long um I'd say maybe maybe a week of that, and then realization of uh, what are you doing to yourself? That's just creating more temptation than it's worth. You don't need that. And so, I mean, your results have been fantastic over these ten weeks. Have you had anyone um, find out what you're doing and kind of push back on it? Oh, yeah. Um, just. Uh, Right before we went down to the uh, meet and greet, uh, I had somebody, somebody, you know, said, "Hey, I heard you're doing um, the carnivore diet," and I said, "I am." She's like, "That's all, all meat, right?" I said, "Yeah, basically, it's all meat." She said, "What hospital has you have you chosen?" I said, "What? For what?" She goes, "Well, for your uh, for your kidney stones and for your bypass." <laughs> I said, "What? No." So I explained to her a little bit kind of about the ideology of uh, and the, you know, pathology or whatever um, about the the program. And um, she kind of kind of laid off. But most of the people that I work with have been very um, that have found out 
have been very supportive. Um, and it's always it's always nice to kind of uh, be able to talk about it. Um, kind of get, makes it more real, I think. Um, makes it more um, uh, you find find a little bit deeper dedication to it when other people know. So, uh, you know, the the backlash that would happen if I said, you know, went to a team meeting and said, yeah, give me a piece of pizza, and everybody would look at me like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, so there's a, that accountability too that uh, that's good to have. I, I work with really great people. That's nice. Um, so knowing what you know now, and knowing how how quickly you've been able to change turn things around, just by simple, literally simplifying your diet, putting yourself more in control of what you're eating and understanding how your body reacts to the food. How do you feel about all the the guidelines and the commercials and everything that we've exposed to all our lives now? Does it frustrate you? It, it, it's frustrating. Um, I mean, some... And, and some of it, I still feel the the pull, I guess. Um, like when we go to the store and we're headed back to uh, where the meat and the eggs are, um, I go through the produce section. And I'm always thinking, oh, I should just grab a tomato and onion and, you know, because that's what I'm used to. That's what I've been told. I'm on a diet. That's not going to be bad. Um, and uh, I think I think you know all those other diets that I've been on. I had progress, you know there there was progress, but th it just wasn't sustainable. Um, and I think the problem with that is maybe I lost twenty pounds in uh, in a month on you know diet A, and then I gained it back, but in my mind, that's okay because I could just go on that diet again and lose it again. And so it's a cycle where um, being on this, being being involved in this lifestyle, um, I haven't been, I, I haven't done anything for longer than a month. Um, and so to be able to do it now at 10 weeks and uh, with really no desire to stop at all, I just see this as being something extremely uh, sustainable. And as far as uh, learning, unlearning what i've learned over the past 51 years um you know i'm still doing that um reading dr B uh, dr barry's books and um learning from you guys on on friday nights and um i mean you guys have always been great at asking questions and you guys are very open and, and give very thorough uh responses um and then the community within uh, dr barry's uh, app um yeah so that, that's kind of, uh, I, I'm still in the, in the process of uh, unlearning that stuff. Yeah, it's interesting, though, like you, you talk about how it's sustainable. Um, part of part of the, the sustainable side of it, I feel, is like because you're satiated all the time, because you can eat until you don't need to eat anymore, Yeah, you have this kind of, Calmness that just you'd mm -hmm. never experience on other diets, you know, especially when you're working. Like I yeah. found working time was the worst. Like I'd be sitting there and I'd be trying to concentrate and I'd be looking at the screen and whatever. And I always at the back of my mind, I'm always like, when's the next snack? What's happening? Yeah. Should I get up and get a coffee? Should I what if what am I gonna have with the coffee? That kind of thing. And that, that just happened with carnival. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I I would find myself, okay, what's what's for dinner? And then what's what 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 am I gonna have for breakfast? That freeing up, I, I can think about so many other things and get so much so much more accomplished. Um and not only that, financially uh, it, it's been uh, amazing too. I mean, people you know, you think that steak is expensive, um, but man, we were stopping for fast food on the way to work for breakfast. And going out for lunch, I mean, each time that would have been, you know, 
20 to 25 dollars it's up to 50 dollars a day um we paid off credit cards in these 10 weeks because of that like not going out to eat all the time um that's something that we never would have been able to do without it that that's awesome and that's just another one of the side benefits of it right paying off credit yeah. card debt yeah. it's amazing <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely that's awesome so as far as you're concerned for for now it's kind of all the way absolutely absolutely mm. um and uh i'm 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 i've kind of been going back and forth between bbb and e and lion diet um just to uh kind of stick my foot into the the the, the most elimination uh part of it um but i mean i i don't see any time uh, of be stopping at one point i would have been like i can't wait to start reintroducing foods and now i don't care like it's not even mm -hmm. on the radar the one thing i i and have i am looking forward to i have a i have a uh, met a friend we met a friend uh, that's in spain through uh through this uh through one of the uh facebook pages and uh she uh we had talked about she has talked about wanting to come over after she has uh gotten to her ideal weight and uh we just she said um we can go dancing i'm like i, I we don't dance <laughs> so she said well i think the one thing that uh all of us can do that you can't do now that you want to then and so uh we decided on paintball so i'm looking forward to paintball <laughs> and um so you met this uh friend from spain who will eventually come over have you um have you ever have you traveled much overseas is that something you'd like to do too i would i mean if we could if we ended up going to see Luz before uh, she came over here that'd be cool um but uh yeah that's one of those things that uh you know i i really haven't i'd, I'd like to um but even uh getting a, a, an extra seat in an airplane right now that's it's like always on my mind um mm. so uh like even when we went to las vegas uh the two of us got three seats and uh uh but yeah that that's something my brain hasn't been able to wrap around that yet not having mm. to do that yeah okay well that that's definitely uh, that, that's definitely in the not too distant future right it's Absolutely. i mean 55 pounds down already it's amazing what the 10 weeks have done i can't even imagine what 10 months will be like i can't even imagine i, I and i can't imagine going back after the, to the second annual meet and greet down in south carolina um and uh, being able to take more pictures with everybody and just compare um mm. what what it was just two weeks ago to what it will be then yeah it yeah i i'm it'll be like uh, a whole new group of people <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely yeah i mean um one of the one of the highlights for for our our trip down there was when uh we got to uh meet uh meet sean um so the the, the guy that really introduced me to the the carnivore lifestyle and uh he talks about um going down uh, deciding one day he's going to walk down and touch the front door of the church down the street and mm -hmm. uh i told him that we were we actually were able to have lunch with them one day and uh he's i told him i said i'm on my way out um i'm going to drive down there and and touch the door and get my picture uh touching the door of that church and he just said okay let's go and so we both walked down to the church and we got a picture with uh, both of us touching the front door and uh i don't know it's just kind of one of those experiences that was just so surreal um no, no, it, it, and like talking to you dave i mean i've only been doing this for 10 weeks and already i get to you know chat up with you yeah um i i mean it's my pleasure to be be talking to you steve it really is um and speaking of that, um, you have your own YouTube. You mentioned, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. talk? Can you talk a little bit about your channel? Sure. Basically, what I did was I started filming um, 
like kind of updates on a weekly basis, but I never edited them. And they just kind of kind of sat by the wayside. I figured someday I'll edit them and, and put them up on the channel. Um, and then uh, it was after the meet and greet um, that I heard a story that made me kind of really upset um, where where somebody was a uh, in a situation where uh, they were in a tough spot and um, nobody would come and check on them. Um, uh, his wife would even go out and ask people to come check on him um, and nobody would. And it really made me upset and mad um, that they had to go through this. And so I thought about it on my way home. And uh, I said, that's the reason why I want to do this channel is because if there's anybody else out there like that's going through that situation, um, maybe one of my videos will uh, kind of uh, encourage them even to reach out to me to let them know they're not doing this alone. We're, we can do this together. Um, just, you know, some a little bit of camaraderie, um, encouragement um, goes a long way. So I, I, I filmed my first like 53 second video in the hotel room on the way home. Um, and then uh, I, I'm starting to put up like, just dis discussing my journey. So, um, uh, every every little bit, uh, every little. I'm, I'm hoping to put up a maybe a YouTube once a week, um, and uh, so my first my first video was just up into the point where um, I scheduled my appointment for the uh, gastric bypass. Uh, my next one will be kind of to where I am today, and then I'll just kind of keep adding to that um, along the way. Just so like I I like I remember going back and taking a look at like carnivore kips videos when he was doing a video this is my this is what i'm going through in week eight and that was my week eight so i could take a look at that hear what he was going through and be like okay so what i'm going through is not weird it's normal um same thing with uh with larry um watch i watched his week eight video um kind of got me through kind of that feeling of is this is this weird uh, and it's not one thing i did want to follow up on before we finish up steve so you never ended up going through with the gastric bypass is that right no i didn't um it was actually right after i had um right after i watched sean's video and before i called my wife to let her know this is something we're doing i called the doctor's office and i canceled the appointment mm -hmm. and they said is there is there something wrong? You want to reschedule? I said no. <laughs> oh, Not nice. at all. Nice, nice, and uh, it's uh, it looks like that was the right decision. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, and I've been told by multiple people um, that I really dodged dodged a bullet with that, and I I, I know I did. That that was something mm. that I I never I, I fought off as as long as I thought I could. Um, until I came across that video on July 27th. All right. So, Steve, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your journey. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it. I, 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 I love being here talking to you. Thank you so much.